Let's get to it. Today I'm going to show you how to install baseboards with rounded corners. Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. Before we get started, click that subscribe button, turn notifications, give us a few thumbs up. There you go. Alright, here we have a pretty standard bedroom for our area. It has a couple bullnose corners, the closet, and uh just the rest of the inside corner walls. So when I start with the baseboards, I like to start with the outside corners and get all those done and then do the rest of the walls. And we're gonna be putting in this seven and a quarter inch base today. And first, what you're gonna to wanna to do is take your corners and just mark where they sit on the wall. Uh, if it's your first time, you might wanna make a little test piece with uh, a few inches on each side just to make sure you get the corner lined up right. I just pop them on there and mark them and then you'll have your marks where you can cut your straight pieces. Alright, now you just take some pieces of base that are a little bit longer than what you have to cut and you can make the marks. And I use all zero cuts on these, even the one going into the inside corner and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But now you just put the base pieces on the wall and make your marks where you made the marks for the corners. Pretty simple. All right, leave this piece up against the wall, put your tape measure against it and run it to the other side. And you're gonna to wanna to add an eighth of an inch to this measurement. So this one I would do 41. All right, take those pieces to the saw Make the zero cuts on the marks you made against the uh, outside corners and cut those to length. Now the inside corner that's going to butt into those, for the right side, take a piece longer than what you need and do a 45 degree cut just like this. And then do a zero degree cut and cut off some of the excess brown part. We just want to take that all off. Not all the way to the end, break that piece off, and then we use an angle grinder with a sanding disc to take that remaining brown part off. All right, I'll show you how to do this in more detail later when I do the inside walls. But basically, you'll just take your tape measure, put it on the end, you just coped off the flat part, and then mark it at 41. And you'll cut that at zero degrees and that piece will be ready to go. I make it a little bit longer, an eighth of an inch longer, so when you pop it in there, the corner is nice and tight. All right, so now you take all those pieces back into the room and just kind of dry fit it on there. And if anything is too long or too short, recut it. Looks good to me. Time to glue it up. So you take your 2P10 glue, put it on one piece, spray the activator on the other piece, and hold them together, and glue the whole assembly together before you nail it to the wall. I'll do that all right now so you can check it out. Just a side note here, I'm spraying this all over a furniture blanket I put over their carpet. And the activator has an acetone base, so if you were to get a ton of it on the carpet, it could discolor it. Or if you spray it on, you know, a lacquer finish, something like that, it will um, deactivate the lacquer really quick. So you got to be careful sometimes with this stuff. All right, we got the whole thing glued up. So now you can 
lay it up against the wall and see how it fits. It should fit great if you dry fit it first. And then we can get ready to put the inside corner in. And those rounded corners are not done yet. I have an extra step at the end to get them nice and seamless. All right, time for this inside corner piece. There's a piece we coped. So all you have to do is gently put the coped end in first so you don't break that little top piece off and snap it on in there. The corner looks great. Now you can nail the whole thing off. All right, here we go with our trusty 18 gauge Ryobi. <laughs> oh man. I used to use all DeWalt nail guns, and uh, man, I had bad luck with those things once they switched from the uh, rubber bands that pulled the punch back. So I got a Ryobi one day, and I never looked back, man. If this thing breaks, it's like 100 bucks to get another one. All right, we got all the outside corners done and one inside corner. So now there's just three walls left in the rest of the room. I'll show you how to do that and it's real easy. All right, when I do the inside walls, I wanna make as many straight cuts as I can in the, the least amount of coped pieces. So I'll do the left and the right walls here with the straight cuts and then I'll cope that back wall in. All right, these pieces are really easy. I don't think I have to show you on the saw, but you just put your tape measure down against the uh, end of the wall, mark where it's gonna go before the door casing, and do the same thing on the other side and make some zero degree cuts. You bring those two pieces back in, fit them, and on the carpet, we push it down when we nail in so there's no gaps on the bottom, and nail those two pieces off. So there's just one piece left to do in here and you'd have two zero degree cuts butting into that wall. So here's the left side and then you can see the right side and I'll show you how we do this one. It's very similar to the last inside cut we did. Take your tape measure and butt it into the piece down there and then on this side we'll see what the uh, tape comes in at. And it looks like it's about 122, so you can do 122 and 1 8th. Remember to add an eighth of an inch. All right, so here we just repeat what we did on the first inside cut. We do a 45 degree bevel. Start with the right side and make your cut. Then you'll switch it back to zero degrees. Cut off some of that excess. Break it off and take the rest off with the angle grinder. All right, normally when I do this, I have fans where this camera is and they blow all the dust away as I'm grinding it off. And on my saw, it has a vacuum attached to it. You don't want to breathe this MDF, it's nasty. So you take your tape measure and put it on the end you just coped off on the flat part. And then you'll mark your measurement from inside the room. And I flipped the piece around. I'm used to doing that with crown molding. If you have a double bevel saw, you can just set the bevel the other way, but I'm used to just flipping them around. And then you'll do a 45 degree cut right on that mark you just made. So I set it up, 45 this one. And then you'll do the same thing where you put it back to zero, take some of that excess off, and grind off the rest. And that's it. This piece is ready to go up in the room and be installed. All right, so you bring the piece into the room, 
and just be careful with those corners when you set it in there I'll do um, the right side first here get that in and then I kind of put my hand in the middle of it my right hand and then with my left hand I'll bend this piece in and it'll snap in because we made it an eighth of an inch longer than our measurement and that's how you do those corners so you don't have to worry about the 90 degree corners being off at all every corner just looks nice and tight it won't ever come apart and crack later on we have all the pieces installed in the whole room but it's still not done if you don't want to be like a typical homeowner and just start painting this you have to sand those corners all the rounded corners don't really line up exactly so they have to be sanded. We use a DeWalt multi-tool with the sanding attachment, 120 grit. And you sand these until you can feel with your hand that it's nice and even. If you feel any bump on one side, just keep sanding it with this multi-tool. And the top detail is kind of hard to get. You can take a little bit off and then I go back over that with the uh, sandpaper in my hand. So there's one corner left and we just do the same thing to this corner, sand it out, feel it with our hands, see if it's good. And once it's nice and smooth, it's ready to go. So once these are all sanded, you can clean up, fill the nail holes, do the caulking, a final coat of paint, and this room is done. To see what the corner looks like with the final coat of paint on it, go to crownmoldinginstaller.com. There's a full list of all the tools we used for this bedroom baseboard install, as well as the glue we used on crownmoldinginstaller.com. Thanks for watching, and be sure to leave a comment. Somebody has to.